Welcome to Startup Hack. This is our series about coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a firm believer that if you aren't the one doing the coding in your organization, that learning to code will still help you more effectively manage your team and your product. Or you can dig in and even start writing your code yourself. So I think every entrepreneur should learn to code. And today we're going to learn about SignalR and how you can use that to build some amazing cross communications. So let's go ahead and dig in and get started. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in here. I need to move myself here so I'm not in the way of the code. So. One of the first things that I realized that I haven't really shown you is that if you're in Visual Studio and you go to Get, so it looks like I made some changes here. So I'm going to show you like an example of I made some changes here. So I'm going to undo those changes. And then if you want to make sure you pull latest, this will just fetch. And what fetch does is it actually just fetches down a list of all the changes, but none of the actual code or anything. So the pull will actually do a pull and a fetch. And so this is going to pull down any of the latest changes. And then as you switch, because we're going back through these various different projects here, what you do is you right click on the project you want to be running and you say set project as a startup. And then that way, when you go to hit the play button, it'll start up your project for the project that you're working on that time around. So we're going to get into our project a bit today. So this project is going to go through and in this tutorial, we're going to teach you the basics of building a real time app using Signal R. So we're going to create the project, we'll add the SignalR client library, we'll create a SignalR hub, and then we're gonna configure the project to use SignalR and add code that sends messages from any client to all connected clients. So let's go ahead and dig into this a little bit. So the first thing that we wanna do is when we start one of our program CS, we wanna add SignalR, right? So we wanna build into our builder service, the SignalR. We also are gonna use some razor pages here just to make this simpler to come out of the box with. Now, um, we're also then going to map the razor pages, and then we're going to map a hub called the chat hub. So let's go look at what these hubs are. So the chat hub is pretty straightforward, right? We just take all the clients, and we say all, and we're going to send this to all the clients and tell them, hey, we want to call the receiver message. And so we're going to send the user and the message, which we'll show here. And so we're going to have a parameter that's just going to show, it's going to be a very simple chat app that's going to show the user and then what message they send. And this is going to extend the Microsoft uh, ASP.NET Core SignalR hub class. And so our class is extending that. Um, so when we send this message, then it's going to send in that, in, in that. Now, we have a couple of pages, and I've built these out for you to make this a little bit easier. Um, and so we have the view start, the view imports. Um, but I want to go look at this index pages. This is the core, the core page we're going to be using. So it's pulling in the SignalR uh, JS, which is an important one, and then the chat JS which is actually the one that we're going to be uh, modifying. And so the chat JS is the one that actually has the code that we're going to be working on. And we'll talk a little bit about this. So the very first thing that it does is it connects, does a connect with the builder with URL chat hub, and it builds this out. So it builds this connection. And then we just have the button, which is disabled by default. And then as soon as the, uh, we start to type, uh, so as soon as the connection starts, then it'll enable the button. Um, if not, it'll disable it. And then once we get once this connection gets called by SignalR, so now our, we're used to requests going from the browser to the server. This request is going from the server back to the browser. So this opens a webhook that, uh, excuse me, a socket that uh, SignalR will then call back to the browser. So as soon as this, so on receives the message, then it gets the user in the message and it adds it to the DOM, right? Just finds the message list and appends a child so we can add as many as we want. So we can assign a user supplied strings to an element's text context because it's not interpreted as markup. If you're assigning any other way, you should be aware of possible script injection concerns. So this allows us to then inject you know, the user and the message. So we need to start the connection. So this is what starts at listening um, and it gets the element of send ID to, to do that. We then also add an event li listener that on the click it actually is going to send and invoke this send message. And so this is what we're seeing. And then we have the SignalR hub, which is actually running here. And that was registered in their program.cs. 
And that's pretty much all the code we're really going to use on this. Um, you know, there are some other, and if you go to look at the index page, you can see there's a couple of other DOM elements here. But let's go ahead and fire this off and get started, and then we can debug into it a little bit and learn a little more about SignalR and how this works. So, in this case, to get this to work correctly, we're going to actually open up two tabs. And with these tabs, so we can run them side by side here. Let me get them pop snapped here. Oops. Sometimes it's a little tricky to, to snap the screen. So we'll snap with these two. So now, if I want to say I'm Spencer and my message is hello, startup hack world, and I hit this message, now you notice it even sent it over to this browser, right? Because both of these, when we open the page, are actually creating that socket to listen for that message. So this is a pub sub meaning we have a publish, uh, when people say, hey, I'm subscribed to this message, then we have a publisher who publishes it out to anybody who's subscribed to that message. So if we opened three tabs, we'd see this thing three times. Not this one, because it hasn't gotten it yet. It didn't exist there. Now, it, caught, it brought this, uh, these over with me. So now let's pretend we're Bob. Bob tells, uh, going to tell a funny joke. Now, if I send this message here, this is now, so now we can see this one's got both. This one has both, and this one only has one because we just opened it. Now, our fancy program doesn't even clear these out yet, but if I go over to this one and say, um, let's call this one Sue, and say, hello, funny world, because it's Father's Day, it just was Father's Day, and I had my dad joke uh, shirt. Now, if I close one of these, now you notice uh, this one's only got two, so if I close this one and we send it again, these ones got it twice. So this is pretty cool because it's actually communicating between all these sockets. So how's it doing that? Where's the magic? Let's dive in here a little bit and find out. So first thing we can do is throw a breakpoint onto here. And let's see what this looks like when we actually uh, fire this off. So if I send this message here, you can see it's grabbing the user, the message. And this is going to send async to everybody that's subscribed to this message. So now I'm going to send this out, and it's going to send it, and it's going to hit both browsers. So where the real interesting part of this is happening is also is on the client side, right? We want to be able to see how this is happening on the client side and where we're at uh, and what we see uh, with those hitting. So um, where the really interesting part on this then is we want to see these parts that are sending the message. So let's add a debugger statement into here. Let's refresh just this guy. We only want one of these to fire. Now, this guy will work the same uh, if we do it here. And let's get rid of this breakpoint for now because we understand it's hitting the server. Now, it hits this here. Um, and so what we need to do is we just, now that we have this, we can open our control, our control shift I. And if I go back to this one, and Tommy says, he worms, because Tommy's a bully. So we can see that it hit the debugger here. And so this is the interesting part is that this connection dot on receive message fired. And now we see we have the element. And so we can see the user and the message, right? Eat worms and Tommy, if it'll show up here. And once those run, we can see that it's now it's added them to the DOM because this is obviously, you know, pretty simple piece. Um, and so this is, a, you know, it's an awesome, simple example to show how SignalR can work. This is really ha handy for watching status bars. So if you've got some process running and you want to get percentages back, if you're sending one thing and uh, you need another part to subscribe to it, these are important ways for you to be able to, um, uh, to be able to subscribe to these messages. So this becomes an important way for us to be able to, and SignalR will be an important thing. Um, SignalR pretty much makes it so that Node.js is really never needed. Uh, I know a lot of people still use Node.js for a lot of middle tier type thing, applications. Uh, SignalR makes it so you really don't need this anymore. It's faster, you're still using object oriented. Um, I would highly recommend SignalR over pretty much any Node application. And I would love to hear somebody challenge me on that in the comments below because on new modern .NET Core 6, uh, this is running circles around dot, uh, around Node and allowing to build in a IDE where you're not just guessing at syntax, where it's fully object oriented, and it helps you to to build you know a great application that can do uh, 
dual direction connect uh, communications, which allows you to be able to build some pretty intense and amazing applications. So, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to just build on a lot. Well, I've used this technology over a long time, uh, over a lot of my uh, development experience. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've built uh, is a product by the name of Clean Router. This is an op awesome opportunity for you to be able to keep your kids safe online. It's a great way that you can, uh, as a parent, you know, I'm obviously a dad, it's Father's Day yesterday, and it's a great way for you to be able to keep track of what your kids are doing online, set time restrictions, set times that they can do certain things. And as we all know, our kids are, you know, mostly staring at their phones nowadays. And so we have another great product called Clean Phone. This allows you to be able to manage what applications they have on their phone, to monitor it, to be able to schedule what time they can use it, to be able to set how long, to manage uh, their SMS and call logs. Um, we have a Wi-Fi only model, which allows you to, uh, you know, give that phone to the younger kids. So you don't even want to pay for the data yet. Uh, and, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to dig in and start uh, using for kids to be able to start using technology. So make sure you grab your clean phone and your clean router to keep your kids safe online. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel and we will catch you guys next time. Thanks and have a good one.